From an old farmhouse with a black triangle on its door comes out James, running as if his life depended on it. A woman comes out as well, but before she can get away, she's shot and lit on fire by Vincent and Simon. Once the woman is dead, they leave to look for James, unaware that a hooded man is watching from afar. Meanwhile, Deputy Sheriff Daniel is doing his rounds when he notices James bleeding on the road. Wasting no time, he takes James to the local hospital, which has been largely abandoned after a fire some time ago. This is also where James' ex-wife Allison works, and James hasn't seen her since they broke up after they lost a baby. James is taken care of by Dr. Richard with nurses Allison and Beverly, while Daniel makes small talk with pregnant teen Maggie and her grandfather Ben, who are waiting for Maggie's slight pain to become actual contractions in order to be checked in. In another room, patient Cliff is being watched by Ken, who is still an intern. Hearing some commotion, Daniel goes to check on James, who ends up being sedated because he refuses to cooperate. Now they can only wait for him to wake up, so Daniel takes the chance to try to catch up with Allison, but things are still awkward. Richard asks Daniel to be more patient and understanding with Allison because losing a child is extremely hard, he knows because he's still not over the loss of his own daughter. Moments later, Daniel's walking down that hallway when he suddenly finds Beverly murdering Cliff with a pair of scissors. Her own face is flayed of skin, and when she tries to come after Daniel, he shoots her in self-defense and kills her. While Richard and the nurses come to see what happened, Daniel runs to the bathroom to throw up. Then, he tries to wash his hands, only for sudden dizziness to make him pass out. Daniel sees visions of a cloudy sky over a black desert before Richard and Allison find him and wake him up. They tell him he should rest, but Daniel wants to keep an eye on his mess, especially when he hears another cop has come by because he had been assigned to James' case. State Trooper Mitchell has been sent over because he found the farmhouse full of bodies, and James could possibly be behind it, especially since he has a history of dealing with illegal substances and Allison confirms that the blood they found on him isn't his. Mitchell has handcuffed James to the bed for now, and he asks Daniel for his gun to keep his evidence. Afterward, Daniel goes to the reception to call the death in, but the phone isn't working so he goes outside to his car. Unfortunately, the car radio isn't working either, and while Daniel tries to think of what to do, he notices a hooded man standing nearby. Daniel tries to approach him to know what's going on, only to get attacked by the guy. In fact he gets stabbed, but Daniel manages to push the person off before it goes too deep. At that moment, more people show up, all wearing the same white uniform with a black triangle on their hoods. This Daniel runs back into the hospital where he passes out while the others look at his wound. This time, Daniel dreams of a body in the morgue and a man standing against a triangle of light before waking up and finding the building surrounded by the hooded people, who won't move. The group begins discussing their options when suddenly they hear James screaming. Once they get to his room, they're shocked to find Beverly has become a huge nasty creature that won't react to Mitchell's shots. Daniel jumps in to break the bed and free James before closing the door to trap the monster inside. Scared and worried, Daniel runs to grab the emergency axe while telling everyone they should leave, but they don't think it's a good idea because of all the hooded people outside. At that moment, more shots can be heard, it's Vincent and Simon, who enter the hospital after defending themselves from a couple of hoods. Vincent immediately points his weapon at James, who takes a knife to grab Maggie and use her as a shield. Richard tries to talk to James gently, intending to calm him down, but James reacts by stabbing him. While Ben takes advantage of the distraction to knock James out, the monster that used to be Beverly appears and takes Mitchell's body away. Axe in hand, Daniel goes after them and finds the monster putting its tentacles inside the cop, only to drop him when it sees Vincent and Simon coming too. Vincent shoots the monster, then together with Simon he ends it with multiple accents. Daniel runs back to the lobby, where Richard's body is missing and James has been handcuffed to the wall, and he tells everyone to hide while Vincent comes over as well, demanding for James to be handed to him. Worried about what they may do to James, Daniel turns him down and tries to team up with them in order to leave, but Vincent punches him before explaining that the last time they trusted someone. They hurt Simon so badly that now the boy can't speak. Vincent pushes Allison away too and this time Simon cuts in, thinking Vincent is taking it too far, especially when he mentions the option of burning the place down. Daniel and Allison manage to convince Vincent they don't know what the heck is going on and are just innocent bystanders, thus the next order of business is lighting Mitchell's body on fire and tossing him outside to stop him from becoming a monster too. Afterward, another argument begins about what to do next, especially when Maggie begins having abdominal pain which is a bad sign and could require a c-section in a hospital without the right equipment. Allison needs to go to the med supply room to collect what she needs to help Maggie give birth, but Daniel doesn't want her to go alone, so first, he needs to get armed again. He manages to convince Vincent and Simon to cover him while he goes to his car to retrieve his weapon and ammunition by promising to share everything with them, and they get surprised when they go out and don't see the hooded people anywhere. Kim and Allison take Maggie and Ben to another room so the girl can be more comfortable but the pain is getting worse, causing Allison to break his promise to Daniel of waiting for him and go to the supply room alone, not noticing the mysterious presence that follows her. Outside, the trio manages to get what they needed just before the hooded people show up again. After killing the one that attacks them, they go back to the hospital, 
where Daniel gets furious when he learns Allison left for the supply room alone. Vincent accepts to go with Daniel to look for her while he explains that the weird hooded people killed Simon's family and he had barely managed to get the boy out of his house alive. After picking up Mitchell's gun, they make it to the supply room and fill a bag with as many things as they can, but they don't see Allison anywhere. They should get back now, but Daniel hears a weird noise. It's a phone ringing, coming from Richard's office. While Vincent opens a box to find pictures and a book that indicate the hooded people are a cult that sacrifices humans, Daniel picks up the phone. The call is coming from the morgue and Richard is the one calling, confirming he's the leader of the cult. He swears his intentions are altruistic and he's doing what is right to make up for his daughter's death. Also, he mentions he's going to help Allison before hanging up. Daniel takes the supplies back to Kim and asks her to look over Maggie until they find Allison. Kim doesn't want to be alone because she doesn't have enough medical knowledge and is afraid of the hooded people, but Daniel assures her they won't get inside because they are here only to stop them from leaving. He gives Mitchell's gun to Ben and a radio to Kim to keep in contact, he also leaves them an axe just in case. Vincent doesn't want to go down to the morgue blog, but he's found Jamie's picture among the others in the box, so he may be able to help. Daniel, Vincent, and Simon go to talk to James, and when he refuses to share what he knows, they break his finger with a hammer to make him talk. James explains he met a girl that promised him some fun substances, but when he followed her, they didn't go to some club or alley, they ended up in the farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. Richard made James and the girl take a mysterious substance, then he made them get busy in front of the whole cult while calling the hooded people his church. Then, James and the girl had to watch the cult members sacrifice people and change their bodies into those hideous monsters, what could happen to Beverly. Now they have a better idea of what's going on, the trio frees James and takes him with them to the basement, which is in terrible condition because of the fire. Kim gives them directions through the radio, but the men find an extra set of stairs that nobody in the hospital had known about. While the men begin going down those stairs, Allison wakes up on an operating table and finds Richard nearby, washing his tools after having operated on her. He explains that losing his daughter destroyed him, but this compelled him to find a solution and now he's able to defy death. When Richard finally turns around, Allison notices his face has been flayed off as she hears him say that during his first try at the ritual, he made mistakes that caused the fire at the hospital, but this time he's been successful. Now Allison can make up for the death of her baby by giving birth to the reincarnation of Richard's daughter, who has already been implanted in her belly. While Kim sedates Maggie to help her with the pain, the men arrive on the lowest floors and find the summoning circles from the book drawn on the floor, which Vincent and James confirm was found back in the farmhouse too. They also find a door with a black triangle on it that makes Daniel have those weird visions again, this time including the memory of the day Allison lost their baby and a monstrous face. Vincent isn't sure they should be going further, but Daniel and Simon are already going in so Vincent follows them while dragging James. The men find a room full of butchered bodies while Kim notices Maggie is bleeding, so she'll have to perform a C-section. She has no experience with this and having to act by just following a book's instructions makes her hesitate, causing Ben to get mad at her for not being of help. While they argue, Maggie suddenly stands up and kills Ben before expressing how happy she is to carry Richard's baby. The hooded people begin showing inside the hospital to take Maggie to the next ritual, and Kim runs away to find a place to hide. In the basement, Vincent gets violent because of the ritual magic getting into his head, but Daniel manages to calm him down. Suddenly the bodies begin moving and kill James. Daniel and Simon do their best to defend themselves while a hypnotized Vincent follows the figure of a woman he sees at the back of the room. During the struggle against the bodies, Simon and Vincent get separated, and Simon runs down a corridor only to suddenly find himself in Vincent's house. Vincent is there too, looking deranged as he blames Simon for everything before attacking him. Simon pushes him back by attacking him with a flare, which breaks the illusion and makes Vincent see reason, getting an apology out of him. Meanwhile Daniel finally finds Allison, but at first, he sees an illusion as well, the room is pristine and Allison is normally pregnant. However the illusion breaks when Richard's voice echoes in Daniel's mind, telling him he knew Daniel had been relieved to know Allison had lost their child. The real room is revealed, showing it's covered by the monster's goo and tentacles that come out from Allison's body. The illusion tries to ask Daniel for help, but Daniel knows he has to do the right thing and uses the axe to take Allison out of her misery. After he's done, he's suddenly transported to a room in the morgue with a glowing triangle on the wall. As Richard speaks in James' mind about defying God, the cultists appear behind him together with Maggie, who stabs James before joining a skinless Richard. By chanting in an ancient language, Richard opens the triangle into the wall and triggers more visions of the cloudy place for James. Then, Richard blesses Maggie, who yells and walks back while also seeing these creepy visions, only to die giving birth to another monster that Richard calls his reincarnated daughter. Vincent and Simon show up to fight the monster, who takes them out of the room before capturing Vincent to munch on him. Coming to terms that he won't survive this, Vincent covers the creature with alcohol so Simon can throw a flare at it, effectively lighting them both on fire before escaping through a ventilation shaft, unaware that the monster is still alive and following in. Back in the morgue, Daniel attacks Richard with the axe to stop the incantation, but it can't hurt him because he isn't human anymore. Richard grabs Daniel and promises to reunite him with Allison if he just lets go. 
As an answer, Daniel pushes Richard into the triangle door, which closes behind them and causes the whole area to start shaking. At the same time, the monster catches up to Simon and almost gets him. But with the door closing, Simon is exposed from the lower area back into the lobby, safe and away from the creatures that got left behind. As the sun rises outside, Simon looks around, ignoring all the bodies until he gets to reunite with Kim. In the place behind the triangle door, which looks exactly like the visions, Daniel finds Allison and holds her hand as they look up at a giant black pyramid floating above the void. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.